Hello guys and gals, Knuckles Up or Michael here, and today I'm back with a brand new video. Today's video is going to be about the Walking Dead video game series. Before we start though, I'm going to host these weekly votes so you guys can see the content that you want to see. I'll show two games and you pick your poise and vote on the one that you want to see a video made for it. For next week, would you rather see a video about Hello Neighbor, the interactive, PG, family friendly, yet kind of creepy horror game, or would you rather see a video on how Mario Party for the Switch could revitalize the series? Let me know in the comments below. Speaking of Nintendo Switch, the new Smash Bros looks unreal. Sorry for getting off topic. Anyway, today I have a video for you all about the Walking Dead video games. And if you're like me, you have felt... Doped! Doped! Bamboozled! We've been smackledorfed! That's not even a word and I agree with you! After you have finished playing the game. As always, before I get into the nitty gritty, I like to give a summary of the game and my two cents on whether or not I like it. The Walking Dead has been the face of zombie media and the horror and drama TV show combo for the last eight or so years. The comic book started the franchise and eventually other media soon followed. Of course, video games are what we are talking about today. And in 2012, Telltale Games released a choose your own adventure version of The Walking Dead. While there are certainly some similarities to the comic and the TV show in terms of setting and character, the game essentially stands alone as its own story within the universe. There have been three main games with a couple of spin-offs, but I'll be honest, I have only played season 1 and 2, so my coverage of the game today will be limited to that. Spoiler alert commencing shortly, and spoiler alert commencing for the whole video. This this just one big spoiler, so if you don't want any spoilers, click away now. In season 1, you play as Lee, a man who was somewhat saved from a life in prison by what appears to be a lunatic who jumps in front of the cop car driving you to jail. Turns out that is no person, but rather a... Or anything but zombie. Lee becomes the caretaker of Clementine, an absolutely adorable little girl. After five episodes, Lee is sadly bit by a zombie and he dies. Now I love this game, I really do. My only two problems with it are small but annoying. The first is the game is just too easy. Every time you find yourself shooting a gun, you don't need to be blazing saddles, gunslinger, and knocking headshots for miles. The skill cap of doing anything in this game is so very low. I don't often find myself asking for a game to be harder, but this is one of those rare cases. Second, this is more of a story than a game. This is not a huge complaint of mine, but this game feels like a vast majority of choosing dialogue and a very small percentage of looking for tools, solving puzzles, and whacking zombies with machetes. Otherwise, it's a very good game. Now this is where the video gets interesting. This game is by no means a choose your own adventure. No matter how many times you have been led to believe that, this game is a series of preset determined courses of action disguised as choice. And and this is the most frustrating thing about the interactive narrative genre for me. What do I mean by this? Well, the game is filled with understandably tough choices. A great example comes early in Season 1, when Sean and Duck are both in trouble. You can save one or the other, but not both. This should change the outcome of the story, right? Well, sadly, no, it does not. When I finished my playthroughs of both seasons, I wanted to check decision charts to see the extent to which my decisions changed the outcome of the game. What I found was that most decisions did not have an impact at all, and the ones that did only had a minor impact and then was reversed in a later episode. Regardless of what I chose the first time, you pick option A, but then option A gets killed the next day? Coincidence? I think not. So for your sake, I'm going to highlight every decision in season one of The Walking Dead that seems important, but is really not. This will give you an understanding as to how deceptive the buzzword choose your own adventure really is. Here we go. You can choose to leave that day or night on the first day as Lee with Clementine. Either way, you meet Sean and go to his family farm. The other character with him changes depending on night or day, but you never see the other character again, so it's irrelevant. And you end up at the same place, so it doesn't really matter. Lie to Herschel about your past. Either way, it never gets brought up again by him. Save Duck or Sean. In both cases, Duck is fine and walks away clean and unbit, and Sean is ripped apart by zombies no matter matter what decision you make. Uh, Duck, you're an idiot. In both cases, Herschel kicks you out of their family farm. Is Duck bitten? Who cares who you side with? It isn't brought up in a significant way later, nor does it detract from the bathroom zombie that happens in both scenarios. Give Irene the gun? She's a person who's clearly struggling with some sort of depression or maybe PTSD, and you can either end her life or not. Either way, she grabs the gun and kills herself. Who do you save, Carly or Doug? At first this one seems actually important, but then you realize that the next six or so decisions don't change at all based on this seemingly important choice. Do you cut David's leg free from the bear trap? Either way, David and Travis end up as zombies while Ben is the only remaining individual of the high school. Kill Jolene? Sure, why not, because either way we never see her again. Kill Larry? Doesn't matter if you help, he still dies anyway. Kill Danny? Doesn't matter. Loot the car? 
This one is actually really interesting. This was the perfect opportunity to the game to have branched into two very different stories, but instead you end up at the same outcome but with slightly different motives. I'll talk more about this one later towards the end of the episode, but this one is super disappointing. Do you shoot the trapped women? Doesn't matter. While episode 3 is not heavy on the big decisions, the last moment of the episode relates back to Carly and Doug. Whoever you saved in the pharmacy now gets shot by Lily and you can't do anything about it. They were both doomed to die from the start, which is pretty lame. You can forgive Lily or kick her out of the group after she kills either Carly or Doug, but in both cases, she leaves never to be seen again. If you invite her back in the group, she will steal your RV and hit the road, Jack, and she won't come back. No more, no more, no more, no more. And if you say no to her entering the group again, she will be left on the road and it is unclear what happens to her. In both cases, you do not find out what happens. Next, do you take Clementine to Crawford with you? Who cares, doesn't really matter. In the meantime, the only thing that changes is the way Clem kills a few zombies. Do you save Ben or not? Again, another moment where you could really break between two stories, but it's lost. If you save Ben, he will continue the story with you, and if you don't, he will die. In both cases, the remainder of the story does not change in the slightest depending on the route that you took in your decision. This is evident in the next choice, which is revealing your bite to the other survivors and convincing the other survivors to help you or not help you on your journey to find Clementine. This decision will change who goes with you on your quest, but the events in those quests remain exactly the same and so does every future decision you make from now until the remainder of the game. You can go solo or with everyone, it doesn't matter, the game plays out the same way. You cut your arm off to stop the spread of the infection? Uh, yes or no, Lee somehow still makes it to the end before he dies via the zombie plague. When face to face with the man who kidnapped Clem, you can give up your weapons or not and choose to be more passive or more aggressive. Regardless of the path you take, the man ends up dying and the only thing that changes about the way he dies is whether you kill him or whether Clementine kills him. In both situations, you and Clem walk out unscathed by this man and this man dies. Finally, speaking of this man, remember how I mentioned the food in that car in episode 2? Well, this is the guy. If you take food from the guy, he has a motive to kidnap Clem out of revenge, but if you opt out of taking the food from his car, he still takes Clem for a weird reason that does not hold up well in my opinion. Just something about Lee being a bad man and therefore he has to kill him and steal his babysitting daughter. I don't really understand Clem and Lee's relationship, but anyway, he wants to kill Lee and save Clementine from him, which to me doesn't really make much sense. The food reason worked a lot better because that ended up having this character's family leave him and one of his kids dying, which is pretty heavy, and for that, a pretty good reason to kidnap someone else, but otherwise, not so much. The game finally ends with Clem either killing or not killing Lee before he turns into a zombie. Season 2 begins with Clem, our protagonist, and now time to delve into to season 2. On second thought, no pun intended, we don't need to. I think you get the gist of the problem I have with this game in this little rant. While I do really enjoy the Walking Dead games, I can't help but feel that this is misleading to brand games as choose your own adventure stories, when in fact this is the furthest thing from the truth. I really wish a simple decision like choosing to leave at day or night would create two alternate storylines with maybe some similar characters and some unique to the storyline to make the game authentic and how time can change the outcome of many decisions in life. Sadly, this is not the case, so don't be fooled if you get your hands on this game. You will enjoy it, and I guarantee you, but you won't be as in control as you think. Anyway guys, that is going to be all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Make sure you comment any thoughts you have. If I left anything out, or if you disagree at all, I'm always up for a discussion. Let me know down below what game you want to vote on for next week, either Hello Neighbor or the Mario Party series. I'm always up to hear what you guys want to hear, because at the end of the day, you're the audience and you make the decisions here. Like if you enjoyed, comment down below if you have any questions, further comments, subscribe if you have not, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.